I'm gonna go over today what I'm using here in southern New England behind the islands for jigging tuna. I'm gonna go over jig binder, jig sizes and styles, terminal gear, and then I'm gonna get to my setups and how I rig those up. This is a Mustad jig wallet. It's an MB020 is the model. It's in the $60, $70 range. I wanted a binder style bag. There's a ton of stuff on the market. Roll up bags, binder bags. Nomad makes them, Shimano makes them. What I wanted was maximum capacity. This has the ability to hold 35 jigs in a relatively small package. And I like it that it's it'll lay flat. Like I said, the way I have the boat set up, my helm seat is also my rigging station and my ice chest kind of, it's all in one. So you just, I have this in the back there. You can just flip through it. It's closed, it's mostly sealed, salt spray. You have your large medium pouch, another large medium pouch, your long pouch, and your small pouch, two of them. There's a bunch of different styles of jigs in here from just your typical vertical jig to some, I have some slow pitch stuff in here, some flat fall Shimano butterfly jigs. I don't, I don't own a slow pitch rod, but what we're doing with these is I'm either just finding bottom and just popping it, letting it flutter, pop it, let it flutter. And you'll see one side of this is flat. The other side has that ridge on it and popping it and it'll it'll flutter down these things really they do this and it really really throws a lot of shine out there i'm not haven't really gotten into the cadence of vertical jigging just letting it down and ripping it up 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 kind of just popping these at depth it's been working great it's the butterfly jig section these have been good for a long time i used to use butterfly jigs back when they just had the treble on the back same thing with these, you got that flat side and then you got the bow over here. These are just a quality jig. Been using these for a while. The hooks on these are anywhere from seven aught. This is a nine aught. This is an 11 aught. Bigger jig, these are six ounce. The blue one's an eight ounce. You just see the three different sizes here. Some of these jigs, when you get them, they're gonna come with little little small four aught, five aught hooks. Best place for these is just get rid of them, you know, not good. You're gonna wanna go ahead and upgrade. BKK makes a really great hook. I favor 7 aught, 9 aught hooks. Some of my stuff, my heavier 300 gram, are 11 aught. Shimano Butterfly Jig, 9 aught, can't go wrong with that. That's this. This is that 9 aught BKK. So here I've laid out, I have a, I have a 7 aught, a 9 aught, and an 11 aught. Owner makes a great monster assist hook. I found this brand Ocean Cat is a, either a real good copy of them or it's basically exactly the same thing. You can find these are a little cheaper. Kevlar cords, 250 pound. This is a three inch cord on this one. This is a nine aught. That's the one in the middle here. Just gonna go over and show you a few of these what we got bid on last year. Shimano Butterfly Jig, this is tried and true. I have a hole. Whole, one of these whole sleeves in my binder is all butterfly jigs, four ounce, six ounce, eight ounce, sand eel color. It's a Mustad Moon Riser with, with a nine aught BKK. Just the pink. Pink and glow was good last year. Sand eel too, you can't go wrong with. It's just a little Ocean Cat jig I have. This, this also got bit. This is a great 
Can't go wrong with silver either, guys. Burnt orange, sand deal imitation. It's actually a flat fall jig, good color. What you want to, so you don't want to have this, you don't want these assist hooks when you rig them. These come in different lengths from one inch all the way to, I think three inches, the, the Kevlar cord. You don't ever want that to go back when it's rigged past the back of the jig. So that, that rigs about three quarter of the way down. You know, take this one that is rigged, you're about three quarter of the way down. I kind of had this laid out so you could tell inches and sizes a little better if you're wondering. As far as terminal setup goes, first thing you want to do is get yourself a good pair of pliers here, split ring pliers. These are Danco, these are about $30 a line cutter on them these are super strong they're good for these number six seven and eight split rings and this is the setup here you got your number six ball bearing number eight split ring your number six and a half solid ring on your hook and this is an eight but i'll i'll usually use a six on the jig and we're going to open this up and put it right on that solid ring and i'll get to that in a minute I'll show you how to rig this get your swivel to your ring you're going to want to go ahead and open that ring up solid ring on your hook there you go and here's the jigging setups these are Shimano Speedmaster 12s this is a two speed reel I like these the Low gear is not too low, high gear is just right, and they're mated to a Travala PX jigging rod. These rods are the XX heavy rods. It's like a moderate, moderate taper jigging rod. Five foot eight in length, gimbal butt. I have this reel marked at 15 pounds to drag and strike, and then full gear at 30. Sixty-five pound power pro. There's approximately four hundred fifty yards on there. Bimini twist to a twenty-five foot, eighty pound diamond product wind on leader. You know, I like the wind ons for a couple of reasons. It's just a super smooth connection. And also it kind of helps out when you're marking those fish at that 50 to 60 foot mark where that thermocline is. You let this out, this is 25 feet. You count your four or five seconds. Those fish are marking at 50 or 60. Just add another four or five seconds. Now you know you're down there. It really put this reel through its paces this summer with a large bluefin tune. I'm gonna link that video at the end for you guys, but the reel, the reel did heat up. The, the drag was heating up, and also the, the gearing also began to heat up. But it, but it, it dissipated. It kind of went up and down. Kind of did what it was supposed to do. And I caught fish after that with the reel, and it's, it's fine. Drag's still smooth. Everything works great. You know, not, nothing warped or nothing silly happened. Well, I hope everybody enjoyed that video. Maybe I kind of helped someone out with rod reel selection or. Vertical jig sizes, weights, hooks, stuff like that. If you have any questions, comments, leave them in the comments section. I try to try to answer every comment. I definitely read them all. So we got a we got a few more months here until the tuna show up. See you on the water.